marketing tips and strategies for service-based businesses. Guys, Kim Barrett here from Your Social Voice. And today I wanna to share with you a few of the tips and strategies that you can take if you're a service-based business into your marketing. Because a lot of the times, what I see out there in the marketplace, for lack of a better word, is rubbish. Like if you think about professional services or service-based businesses where you're performing a service for people, what I always see happen is that most of the time people revert to a price war. That's what they think is their strategy. Oh, I do, uh, um, I do financial accounts, I do end of year tax returns for $199. Or I do them for $175 or I do them for $100. And there's this big fight over price. And that should never be the case. That should be the very last resort. You don't want to be like a, a rug warehouse closing down every week because you're moving and you never move for 10 years and you're always there, right? We want to make sure that if you have a marketing strategy and it's out there and it's working for you, that it works consistently over time. I like it to having a tap where you can turn the tap on, you have a flood of new leads, inquiries, and then you turn that tap back off. Now, the biggest thing that I see that most people miss out on is two things and it is part of your marketing strategy most of the time you're expecting me to talk about paid things paid ads paid marketing but i want to give you two if you're a service-based business that you definitely need to utilize and if you don't you leave a lot of money on the table so number one is referrals now look i know there's a whole lot of content out there around referrals getting people to you know bring more customers in for you from your existing clients and the biggest thing i would say with that is just do a good job if you do a good job for someone, if you help them out a lot, most of the time they're going to be more than willing to send you referrals. Now look, sometimes you're going to have to ask for them, but I think that's fine if you've done a good job and then go, hey, who are two to three people, and this is a really big key here, similar to yourself, similar to yourself, same type of personality, same type of maybe it's business or industry or a similar type of business growth, similar to yourself who could benefit from what we do. I would really appreciate you know, if, if I could have their contact details and connect with them, see if we can help them like we've helped you. Just something as simple as that can make a huge, huge, huge difference in the way that your business grows as a service-based business. Now, most of you probably going, Kim, I already do that, so I'm preaching to the converted, which is fine. But I always like to reference that because a lot of people forget about it. They forget about using the referral strategies, forget about bringing people in. Jay Abraham has a tremendous um, piece of uh, content or really like life work on it. I think it's 67 different referral strategies to consistently bring business in, which is just amazing, right? I think we've got like four, something stupid like that. We don't have that many all together. Now, what about reactivation? What about utilizing other aspects of your business to bring in new people, right? And what happens is most of the time people have inquiries, people have contacts that come in and they don't actually take another step with them. They don't go to another level. They don't do something else with them, right? And this is what most people call dead leads or there's lead pools, right? And they're just sitting there and they're waiting for someone to help them. Now, what we utilize is something called the nine or potentially 10, depending on how you articulate it, the nine word email, right? Which is tremendous and it works amazingly. So I shared this with a lady the other day who'd be getting a lot of results from her marketing, a lot of results from her advertising. She's just launched a few new products and services. And I was like, have you done the nine word email? She's like, what's that? And I said, well, the nine word email is a simple email that you send out personalized. Subject line, I'm giving you guys some gold here, right? Subject line is just their name, right? For example, me, Kim. Then in the, the uh, body of the email, it says, hey, Kim, just like, um, are you still looking to get more clients? Question mark. Cheers, Kim. Very simple. Nine to 10 words, sometimes 11, depending on how you articulate what you do. But what it does is it allows people to indicate, to put their hand up and say, yes, I'm interested in working with you. Then from there, you can move forward and have a conversation with them and chat to them about what you do. Chat with them, chat to them about how you can help them move forward in their business. That's what we call a reactivation strategy. So it works tremendously well. The, one of the ladies, she, it just literally SMS me just before we started filming this. And she said, hey Kim, um, here's one email I sent, had a 20% open rate, one person clicked. I sent out the 10 word email. My email's been blowing up all day. I've got calls booked all day today. It's going to be amazing. Purely by sending out that one simple email. Didn't cost her anything, didn't take any extra time, energy or effort because she's willing to do the sales calls, she's willing to do the work. 
that one simple email is probably gonna be responsible this week for bringing in around about $10,000, which is pretty epic to say the least. And that's with no paid advertising. All right, so that is just some simple organic stuff. Now, let's look on the paid side. Let's look on the lead generation side of marketing because one of the big things that people don't do is number one, they have a website that people go and visit, but they don't have a way to capture them, right? They don't have a way to bring them in to entice them to leave their details so that they potentially can become a client. They don't have an offer on the page. I go to websites all the time of things that I'm interested in and there's nothing there. Like, give me a guide, give me something of benefit to myself, give me something that will get me results in advance so that I can utilize that to grow my business. Give me something of value so that I can take things forward with my business for what you do for me, right? Give me a cheat sheet, give me a download, give me something, something we're gonna cover in one of our other videos around lead magnets, but give someone something of value so that you can capture them because most service-based businesses don't do that, right? They leave it or they go, cool register for a consultation call. I don't know you yet. Don't ask me to marry you straight off the bat. If you go into a bar, you just walk up to a girl and ask her to marry you, that's not gonna work, right? You gotta say hello, buy a drink, you gotta have a little bit of dance, right? There's gonna be a little bit of relationship built there before you go in for the kill. So you have to treat your business like that as well. You have to have an ability for people to be able to have a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a, a, a taste of what it would be like to work with you, to see what you're about, what your company is about, things like that. And most of the time, it's one of the big things that people and businesses miss out on. It's huge because they only focus on themselves. They don't focus on the clients. Here's all the things that we do. Here's all the things that we do. This is what we can do to help you. It's like, well, no, give me something that will help me. You know, and if you can give people results in advance, something that's very, very important, then you know it's just tremendous and they're going to want to work with you. They're gonna to wanna to choose to work with you. And a lot of people go, I don't wanna give away my best stuff for free. I don't wanna give away content for free that I could charge people for. I don't wanna give away some of the strategies that I use in case my, uh, my competitors steal it. So if your competitors steal it, good luck to them, right? Because they're not straight ahead like you guys because you're watching this video, right? If people use it and they get a result, guess what? It doesn't mean that they'll never come and work with you. If they get a result by using your free stuff, most of the time people are going, oh, imagine what their paid stuff's gonna be like. If I pay them for their service, I downloaded their sheet on 67 different things that you can claim on your tax return that my accountant didn't tell me about. When I go to get my tax done, who am I gonna to go to? I'm going straight to them, right? Because they've already helped me and gone, here's all the things I didn't know about that I quizzed my accountant on and they had no idea. Right? Whatever industry you're in, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you identify how you can help people better and you give them that option, right? Now, one more and another good strategy that works really well depending on your ability, depending on your uh, desire for interaction is to do workshops, events, podcasts, webinars, where you can show without a shadow of a doubt what it is that you do and how you do it better than anyone else. How you've got your proven systems to help them grow. So if you can get into an event, a webinar, if you can get people to show up and listen to you, then again, you're gonna be streets ahead of everyone else because most people, like one of the biggest fears people have is dying in public speaking, all right? So if you can get out there and public speak, you're gonna be ahead of probably 60% of your competitors. The other guys are scared of dying. The other guys are scared of getting up and talking about what they do. So if you can overcome that and you can help people with that, then again, it's going to be completely different for you versus any other person, right? And you don't have to do it all yourself necessarily. You know, you can find industry body events and things like that where you can get that experience up so that you can interact with them so you can start to do these things. Now, one final tip before we wrap up is around how you present what you do. I highly recommend that you create a methodology because if you're, in a, if you're a service based business, everyone does what you do, right? Unless you're very, very hyper niched which again, I recommend that you do also, everyone does what you do. So you have to have a point of difference. And one of the ways you can do that is through using a methodology. Now, a methodology is your process and system for how you do something, but you should give it a name. You should give it a sexy title, right? For example, we have our NOC method. We have our mogul method. We have so many different systems and methods that we use, our methodologies for getting clients results, which if you really broke it down, could be seen as quite simple, but it's the way that we do things. So when people hear the way that we do things, it's different to anyone else. No one else uses those methods and processes but us. So it's our point of difference in a heavily competitive service-based market, right? 
that is one of the keys. That's an important factor to differentiating yourself. And it's a really big tip around separating yourself as a service-based business when you're doing your marketing. So hopefully you guys have appreciated that. You've understood what I've shared with you there and you can take away a few little tidbits. If you go and use that nine word email and you make a whole bunch of money, don't blame me, all right? Hopefully you guys get some phenomenal results with that. Please comment down below and let us know if you do. Give us a like on the video and make sure you subscribe so that you can see everything that we do before anyone else. Until next time, I'm Kim Barrett. You've been awesome. Adios.